G'day everyone, welcome back to my little home machine shop. My name's Aaron. Today I'd like to touch base with you about knurling. And commonly when we think of knurling, we think about knurling on round surfaces, okay, or curved surfaces. And it's predominantly a method that's done in the lathe using uh, some sort of knurling tool which has been hardened. And the process is really a cold rolled process. So it's as the knurl's being formed, the hardened jaws are pushing into it and deforming the the surface of the material, and that's how we get this diamond pattern. Now, depending with your lathe speed, uh, usually when I knurl, I engage the half nut like I'm screw cutting, and I get a better knurl, and I get that single diamond pattern. Uh, as you know, when you're knurling, uh, if you don't have the speed right, you'll end up with a double knurl, and it looks incorrect. Now, when researching this project, I've referred to my old trade manuals uh, which was an RMIT University publication down here in Melbourne. It's been around, it used to be four books consolidated into one. And there wasn't a lot about knurling, especially on flat surfaces. Now, when we consider knurling on a flat surface, and I wanna say thanks to Pete over at Turning Point, who uh, engaged with some comments in my previous video, and he was talking about checkering. He goes, it's not really commonly called a knurl, it's called checkering, and it's quite common uh, on for decorative patterns on on guns for gunsmithing and it's usually done by hand process now for me the solution I needed to have was um, as you know I, I teach high school shop so engineering at high school level uh, these these students are not apprentices they're not pre-apprentices they're pre-vocational students we make a large five and a half inch fabricated vice out of quarter inch thick um, sheet steel that's been laser cut now I want them to have a nice set of jaws to take home with them. So the challenge I had was how to put the knurl in these jaws. Now, I have seen a previous YouTuber do a cold rolled process in his, in his vice jaws, and this was Cam at Battler's Workshop. And he made a special tool for his milling machine and, uh, and actually put a knurl on a flat surface. In discussing this, I spoke to my old buddy, uh, Pete Pillbeam, and Pete goes, look, Aaron, when I went to Dawn one time, now Dawn is an Australian manufacturer of, of uh, work holding devices, you know, uh, drill vices, uh, that sort of stuff. He goes, when I was down at Dawn, I watched them cutting the knurls in the vise. He said they, they actually was a subtractive process, so they were removing material, and they had this massive big fly cutter uh, set up in the milling machine and just ran it very slow and flat out. Uh, auto feed rate and when it went chunk 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 it cut it on the in feed and on the back side of the tool it cut it on the out feed and that got me thinking I thought well I wonder if I can do this at the high school workshop with the tooling I've got um, I didn't have time to build a big fly cutter now it's not a hard thing to do but it's all about finding the steel you know making an arbor to hold it all this sort of thing so simply I just looked at what I had it had on hand and what we had at the high school was a very large uh, shell mill okay or what's called a face cutter commonly shell mills commonly referred to in cnc machining so we had this big 75 millimeter shell mill and it had five teeth and they were uh, carbided insert teeth and i thought i wonder if i could pull it off with that and i'll take out four teeth and leave one tooth in there and uh, reminiscent of a certain football club here in melbourne because most of them have only got one teeth as well <laughs> so in playing around with this i I was amazed. I thought, how cool is this? And when I posted it on Instagram, I had a lot of interest. Uh, you know, how did you do that? And then other YouTubers reached out to me and Maddie from Maddie's workshop. He goes, hey, as uh, mate, I did the same thing, but it was by sheer accident. I was working on the Cincinnati, accidentally engaged. It went boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden I've got a knurl. He said it scared the shit out of me. So it's, look, other people have done it. I haven't invented it. Like I said, I got the idea from Peter. So today I want to show you how I did it. Now to do this today, I'm going to be running the cutter right on centre and the depth of cut is going to be 0.6 of a millimetre. I've got the milling machine in low range and the RPM set to 400 RPM up here. The feed rate on the table is set to maximum as fast as it will go. Yeah. 
Now, as you know, this is not a channel for to advocate CAD CAM or CNC. I keep that for my other channel, but I think it's befitting of this video that I include this. So this morning I designed it in CAD and I'll upload the CAD model in the comments section. There'll be a URL uh, and you can download my CAD model. Now it is Fusion 360. So if you've got Fusion 360, you can just download this file and put it straight in. You can see how I did it. Now, if you wanted to play around yourself in your own home workshop, uh, you could do that with my model. So in, in the parametric model, I've set up uh, parameters. So you just go into the parameters and you type in a parameter that suits your application. So you might wanna, do you wanna machine on center, slightly off center? Um, do you, how big your shell mill is? Do you wanna change the diameter of the shell mill? And uh, everything, once you do that, hit okay, it will repopulate and you'll see what your pattern will look like. So you won't wreck your job. You can actually do this in CAD first, simulate it, and then you know, check it out. And then if you're happy with it, run it in your job and give it a try yourselves. And as you can see here, by changing the cutters, whether you want to keep the cutter on center or slightly off center, will give you different sorts of patterns, okay? And the patterns you get are rather cool. And you can also see those in the CAD model if, if you choose to have a crack at it yourself. Now, I've also done a curved knurl uh, on some handgun grips. So a while ago now, I, I did a collaboration with uh, Kevin Ellingson from Mechanical Advantage Channel. Uh, he's another CAD CAM guy and a CNC guy. And we did this collaboration video where he did the, someone else donated the CAD model, he did the CAM and I did the machining. And we put a knurled pattern, this diamond pattern, which is commonly referred to as checkering or tear dropping, uh, gunsmithing, which likely, which just like Pete said, is usually done via a hand method. And we did this in the, in the cam, it was quite easy. And I showed you a bit of that footage last time as well. Now there's other forms of knurling also, uh, commonly referred to as ornamental turning. And I want to thank Peter from Turning Point for pointing that out to me. And it's called a galoche rosette. And uh, they're quite really cool patterns as well to look at. And uh, I'm unsure I've never done one of those. Maybe you've done it. And uh, by all means, if you have uh, put a comment down in the comment section, lots of people read the comments. And uh, if you want to, if you've done it, please include the link of your video in there. And so some of my viewers can go over there and watch your channel as well. So there it is. Uh, I hope you found today's video informative. Um, hope you got something out of it. And hopefully you can try this out in your own workshop. Uh, you know, and even if you want to play around with it, just use aluminium. You don't have to use steel. If you want to check out your patterns you get, chuck a bit of aluminium in your milling machine and have a crack at it. Until next time, thanks again. I really appreciate your support. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. And uh, by all means, if you've got any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. Thanks again. Have a lovely day. Cheers.